Hello everyone, welcome to the old MCU crew. We're on time. You guys, you're just moving faster because you're all old in the chat. But us three Zoomers, one o'clock, <laughs> 1 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. Yeah. You're just forward ahead in time. Many people think Jesse's what? acting right now, uh, but that's actually his uh, his real <laughs> real state of being. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where Jesse's at right now. Me and Bronze, we're good. Mm. Yeah. Vibing. What what is that, Jesse? Is this are you eating hamburger? Is are you hungry? Man, I wish that was the case. <laughs> like, oh hello. <laughs> yeah. um, what? Um we're together? Um, um man, no. that'd be great. Is that a hamburger no. chomp? It's not. No, that was me trying to like harness my my worldly energy. Ah. To mm. bring an excellent podcast mm. slash stream slash enjoyment mm. opportunity to your ears and or eyes. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Fantastic. I like that. Yeah. Thank I'm you. a fan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, mostly it was for you two, but. You know yeah. what? I'm going to take this moment to say. Okay. So, uh, number one, happy something? Wally. Everybody. Oh yes, thank I, I learned two. what that was. Bronze informed me what that was. Yeah. I thank you for that. Yeah. And and number two, um, I me and Jesse actually talk about this a lot, but like you know, content creators and influencers that are like day jobs are so much harder than content creator jobs, or they're on drugs, they're unhinged. Uh day jobs are infinitely worse. But but the one thing I miss about like working retail or my day job uh -huh. was there were days that I could definitely be tired or shitty, you know, like sure. there were days that yeah. people would come in and be like, hi. And I'd be like, what can I do for you? Yeah. That's not th really a thing when you're a streamer. The, yes. The I implied feel like Jesse is going through that today. <laughs> you're correct. The implied excuse exists for, uh, <laughs> retail workers because yes. they're retail workers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I yeah. get that. So like I could I could have, you know, I wasn't going to obviously I couldn't outwardly be rude to customers, but I definitely, especially when I worked at the salon, had days where I was like, can I help you? You know. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just not a thing. The worst part of it though is usually it's a shitty customer that cascades into every other customer after that experience cuz you're only human. Yeah. That so it's experience like one lives person on. screams at you. Yeah, for something that's not your fault. And then every other person that day, you're just like, aisle three. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's why everyone's Instead just generally. Of, Let me go get that for you. <laughs> Mo most people, at least I guess most of my friends are just generally nicer to like the service industry because of that. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone yeah. who's worked a service industry job. Because they, they like, get one you know, bad even, guy and it's yeah. like you're actually dealing with satan himself right? like yes the, the they don't leave existence. they don't it becomes a two-hour ordeal like yeah. they don't leave our store not even me personally our store lost someone's magic the gathering pre-order oh my they god -ordered a box. unbelievable they lost it this turned into a 90 minute ordeal for me by yeah. the way yeah wherein i had to get on the phone and call every store in the greater seattle area to and try to find them a box something they could have done themselves just to get them to fucking leave sure like we gave them their money back and everything and they're like well i just don't understand what the point of a pre-order is if it's not going to secure See, all, my box i was like all, the company didn't send us enough they just didn't yeah yeah it's never it's it's generally never the, the they just didn't because ours was a smaller store. So like yeah ours was a smaller store so like if if they only have like because of distribution or whatever they only have 80 boxes they're going to make sure that the big important stores like Target and, and Card Kingdom, which is like the biggest retailer in Seattle, they're going to make sure that those people get their 40 boxes. We don't matter as a tiny little store, right? We're the ones they're going to short eight boxes. Yeah. And then we just have to go on a first come first serve basis. But man, it turned into a 90 minute ordeal. So how do you think the rest of my like seven hour shift went bad? Every well, you other were super cheery and everyone like, was great to you, right? That's what happened <laughs> that's how that story ends no oh it, does. it was Shit. horrible to everyone that came in 
Yeah. I yeah. felt bad later. I was like, it wasn't that kid's fault, you know, but yeah. It was, yeah, it was definitely one of those things where I was just It happens. Like, it stuck with you after my, all these years, so it was definitely impactful. My favorite part of a story is whenever someone explains the situation, explains uh -huh. everything, and then ends with, so yeah, which is like one of those universal, like, we know, yeah. we, we understand. Yeah, you know. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Correct. We, get, we understand. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is I'm pretty sure I can like, I'm pretty sure like we all three of us can tell when someone in our industry has never had a real job. Oh, I mean, I'm one of those people. If you really want to get, to, I've never had a real job. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I can tell. I can tell. You've had. Yeah. You've had. I'm gonna say it right now. You've had. Everything. Well, I mean, I've never had a real t a retail job. You have. You have had a silver spoon in your mouth your entire. You've had everything handed to you. That's not necessary. You are. Wait, but yeah. JP, you you've never your, had a nine to five. Like, no. like a like an office job nope jp's like 25 yeah i'm pretty young yeah, yeah. see i think i might have just broken bronze uh bronze's <laughs> scheme no here. no no you did because not necessarily you're like, scheme but of, uh, of the three of us you're the most responsible which to also, me is crazy uh, like the reason i can clock it's taken it is like 10 years chat I was about years. to say, I feel like that rubbed that off missed... on him. And now it's finally yeah. happened. Someone admits it. Because Someone cause admits it. it. <laughs> I can clock it. Anytime, like, I, streamers that constantly tweet about missing flights, like, all the time, like, above, way above a normal amount, they just say, oh, miss my flight, miss my flight. People that you do a project with them, they're consistently 25 minutes late, or they just forget. Uh, like, there's four or five things where I'm like, you never worked a job. You started streaming at a high school and that's all you've done. <laughs> like I can tell almost right away because I'm like, there's no sense of response. Me, when I sign a contract for a gig and uh, the call time is, is 7.30 a.m., I'm there at 7. Yeah. I'm like, I signed a contract. Well, the, the, <laughs> the whole, I mean, the, the core of that, it, it was, <laughs> it was honestly because of the person that I, like the first quote unquote real job that I had within the industry, the person mm -hmm. above me was like the biggest hard ass. And so if you were late, oh. you got chewed the fuck out, but it was like a big brother type chew out. And so like it happened mm. once and I was like, all right, I'm never going to be late mm. again. <laughs> like, I don't want to get chewed mm. out in front of the entire essentially company. Uh, and so I just right. never was. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's I've where had that the comes reverse from. rub off. I think Jesse has probably witnessed my fall from, I feel like, cause I, I, I worked with Jesse on some cycle back when I worked my job. And I was a person that was like in the call 15 minutes early. And I've seen that slip over time, you know, where I'm like, oh, I'm running five minutes late today. But like when I first started as a full time streamer, it, like anytime I collaborated with other people, I was always like 15 minutes early yeah. on time, the first answer emails. I still keep office hours because that's something as a holdover from being an administrative assistant where I'm like, Smart. Oh yeah, this is my designated time to answer emails. So my email turnaround is like, is like always less than eighteen hours. But what's funny is like Britt was telling me like, oh yeah, day nine, like you know he answers his emails once a week, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's always crazy to me. <laughs> like I got, <laughs> I, I get mad at, <laughs> I get mad at my uh, one of, one of the uh, the engineers that we work with, uh, like software devs that we work with. Because I was huh. like, well, my email's nine minutes late after it was sent. That's not acceptable. <laughs> like, I need my email. <laughs> the second that an email gets sent to me, I need to see that. Because I need to respond to that email. And they're like, bro, not, it's nine I'm minutes. I'm not even going like, to ask why that is. I'm not going <laughs> to. You know, Gmail's a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you uh, use, like, I, I have forwarding from a bunch of different domains. And so, it's all that shit. Yeah, we've got, like, 16 i only know this because we're doing this right now we have 16 different uh domains or 16 different emails on four different domains <laughs> yeah why not bronze what? got one the other day she actually got information about an hour oh, ago I on did. how to activate yeah. a new one see yeah, I did. It's I all did organization, like Jesse. Sounds like a cult to me. Sounds like Bronze got initiated in some weird ass cyber cult. We might be. Oh some shit! Mecca. Yeah. Yeah, you're about to end up on Mars. Ah oh, shit! 
behalf robot. The worst uh, thing. Boy. It's not the oh, worst boy. thing. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyways, MCU. I haven't even looked at the news, admittedly. I know that there was a trailer that came out, and we could start with that if you guys would like to. It's an Ant-Man trailer. For trailer. What? Wait, whoa, what happened? It's an Ant-Man yeah, trailer. Yeah, there's a trailer for Ant-Man. The Quantumania yeah. trailer launched. Yeah. Uh, Are you kidding me? I want to let you know how uh, the last week I have done nothing but work, and I'm so... I was telling Broads, I was like, I think I'm literally suffering from fatigue. But, <laughs> like, I had no... You said this, and I was like, what trailer? Yeah. Wakanda Forever? And it's like, yeah. no, Ant Man. I'm like, what year is it? What is happening? Did I have. What, what, oh, there was also an it? Ironheart trailer. I didn't even know what? that. Oh, I didn't know that. You're going to watch these for the first time ever? Is this official or is this just like a teaser? I, I think that's you official. You know more than me. Hmm. There's one from two days ago. I don't know if that's official, though. Now, is it one of those? There's a lot of. Um, I think it's just all of the scenes that that's fake. That's a fake one. Yeah, the Iron Heart. There's fake. a lot of people who who make trailers now. Yeah, I've noticed this with the. Uh, uh, it was screen Dragon. culture. Yeah. Yeah, where they do like the new trailer for something, and it's just like they mash up a bunch of shit, and you're like, Yeah, Ant Man's I mean, official. Good editing, I guess, but that's not what I was looking for. Ant Man's official. Iron Heart's not. Uh, we do oh, have like the. What? Wait, is this a teaser or is it like a trailer? The Ant Man trailer is the official trailer. Two. It's a two minute and okay. twenty second trailer. It's a trailer. It's a trailer. Okay. It's a straight up trailer. Yeah, it's a real. Is it the trailer? Oh, I wonder if it's the trailer that I saw that was. It leaked. is. It's it's part of that leaked trailer. It's the full leak. Interesting. Uh, I interesting. never watched the leaked footage. It's Yo, good. Never we should watch it because you'll lose your mind. It's so yeah, cool. It's in here. Uh, <laughs> we do need to do the Andor minute though, Jesse. <laughs> Our Andor minute. Our Andor minute. We should the weekly Andor minute. We you should. ready? I don't have a yes. countdown for this. Uh, uh, and or minute and go. Go. Man, that Mon Mothma's politics sure are great, Jesse Cox. My oh my. Certainly. That... What an interesting uh, plot development this show has. Also, uh, speaking of an and or minute, if you want to get real messed up, go watch the movie Hunt for Red October. The dude who's like the, I'm the guy who's uh, paying for the whole revolution. That dude? Yeah is in hunt for red october is the guy who's like we're hunting captain ramius he's the dude who's after sean connery oh, really? in red october but he's like very young and it's jarring because he looks like dude. an entirely different human being but it's he, him it's i crazy. don't understand the most impressive part of this show is every single fucking character is acted so fucking unbelievably well. it is it is the it's first insane. time i've been excited for star wars since before I like, there was a time, it's been a few years. It's been a few years. Even been, Mando, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's fun because I fun. like Baby Yoda's cute, but like, it's not, I'm not like, yeah, I can't wait. This, every episode, I'm like, I can't wait to see what, I can't wait. Again, let me just say for the record, that dude who's like the extra character, who's like going through his own storyline, not connected to any shit. He's going to do some crazy guy, shit. I don't, yeah, I don't know what I don't know if it's going to be a good or bad guy, though. I don't know if he's going to crack the code and then like become the fucking leader of and the that's empire what's so brilliant <laughs> that's what's so it's the first time they literally were like okay we're gonna make a show about a person you already know about it's like obi-wan or whatever and then they were he, like now we're gonna have another character in this that is who knows and that thank god thank yeah. god for that i'd be i'm so happy he exists i don't know anything about his his life i it's it. he's either gonna be the one that figures it all out for the empire or he's gonna be the one that says like man fuck this bullshit I'm going to go join the Rebels, right? I'm going to leak the boring shit to the Rebels and, and figure it out. So Can't wait. I don't know. Yeah, Cyril. That's yeah, who he is. Cyril. Cyril. That's, he's a great character. He's the only yeah, character. Whatever, in like, whatever's going on with him. I, I saw a, a comment like, you can tell a lot about a people or a lot about a person uh, when they interact with a small little service droid. And Cyril got out of the way of it instead of just like walking forward or kicking it over. So I think he's a good person. I, I think I, that's we'll what that see. indicates. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, like, I don't know what, like, his bowl of, like, he, him and that bowl of cereal is, like, a fascinating acting choice. There's yeah. so much going on with this character, and I'm like, I need to know more. It's I need to know more. And they are, like, drip feeding you. It's yeah. one of those things where if this was a multi-season show, this would be, like, two the payoff seasons, in season yeah. three. Yeah, that's it. I, I also, uh, like, the, 
The other thing, Jesse, I, I watched Rogue One on a trip, and now I'm very sad because, like, I got a refresher on where all this ends. It's very sad. He look, it's spelled out in the beginning where he's like, "Look, do you want to? It's me, Stellan Skarsgård. Do, do you want to? Do you want to live forever, or do you want to fucking go out like a G?" Yeah. And he's like, "Damn, bro, I'm in." So yeah. you know, it's already spelled out for you, but like, that's cool as shit. So oh, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Anyways, yeah. that was three minutes on Andor. We that is your we, three minutes yeah, of, we like extra. we said, three minutes. Three minutes. That's Andor. what we agreed to at the start of that. Yeah. So I'm going to catch up because I'm so tired of not being a part of the conversation. Bronze, you're going to lose you, your goddamn mind. It is It like, is a writer's fucking wet dream of a show. <laughs> it is so good. I, know, I feel like I'll love it. I just, I haven't. It's one of those things. I don't want to put it on in the background while I'm doing something else. Yeah. And it demands your attention. I haven't watched it. It really does. And yeah. I mean, Legion is like that too. Like, I feel like you cannot put that in the background while you're editing. Like, you really have to pay attention all six senses if yeah. you lick the I screen. Don't, I can't wait to talk about I don't, y'all. I'm i excited to talk about Legion, too, but, like, it. I'm also, like, I don't, I don't I under, I, stupid I, when I watch that show. I'm, like, I was oh yeah, telling you're JP, gonna, I was, like, I keep rewinding, and I'm, like, I must have missed something. It ain't going to make Maybe sense for a while. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, very <laughs> much understand, but also, I'm like, what? Am I stupid? <laughs> It is very I much like, I think I'm dumb. <laughs> I, think I knew this is going to yeah. be insane when, because if you remember, even though we're not talking about, I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll okay. Save it. All right. Let's watch this trailer. I, I have not watched it. I'm excited to watch this trailer. Let me, uh, I linked it to you guys on Twitter. So you should have it there if you want to pull it up. Let's do this. Uh, fade that in there. And then I got to like mess with the volume a little bit. And then I think we're good. All right. I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yes. Um. Mm, mm. Wait, can you hear that? I yes, I can. Yep. Oh, blah, 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 okay. stop it. I used to. I okay, used to right. okay that's the problem. All right, let me let me pull it up. Let me pull it up on this on this computer then. Okay. That was my fear. I was like, oh. Hey, when you're not around, you're my bad. I wanted to make it. I'm out of time. <laughs> what a good song. Yeah, what a good fine. song. Oh, chat okay. wants the link. Now you guys, a little hall and oats. Now you guys can't hear it. <clears throat> yeah, we're not hearing it. I fixed it. Okay. All right, here we go. You can watch All along right. on your own. Uh, the trailer will show up down there. The audio is going to be a little bit low, and also it's going to be flipped and inverted so that the old DMCA <laughs> dogs don't flipped and us. inverted. Yeah, we Missy Elliott it hit. I don't. We v turned Missy Elliott into a verb. That's what we did. I think she'd want to be, be a verb. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, right. and then we go on, go. Five, four, okay. three, two, one, go. I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Scott, you're an ex-con. How are you an Avenger? Nice. That doesn't make sense. That's cute. But everywhere I go, people tell me the same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> people start like that. That's why we made this. <laughs> like a satellite for deep space but quana wait wait a minute you're sending a signal down to the quantum realm uh oh turn it off now so cassie just killed the entire universe okay that's one well way there's a problem off. yeah geez yeah Oh my God, that's gorgeous. What the hell? Oh, does she know Kang? 100%. Oh, well, there's yeah. Kang right there. It isn't what you think. Yo! Damn. I saw that man there. Bill Murray. I can get you home. And give you more time. Whoa. So, what 
it gonna be? Batman. They changed that dialogue. So the plot of the movie is that Ant-Man goes and does a heist for Kang, right? That's what they're doing. Uh, well, that so yeah, so what the that fuck? Was... who the hell is this guy? Get him, stop talking. Get <laughs> like, out of here, was... Eric. Eric, stop it. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Why is auto? That was on? um, uh, uh, a very cut down version of what was at. Yes, the the D twenty three thing because that, uh, yes, the 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 idea of the scene I was hoping to see was Kang literally was like, if you want to see your kid again, you've got to go on a mega heist for me. So thanks, like that's that's what, that's that's that whole thing. Yeah. I don't want to spoil the actual movie, but like that's they showed like an extended scene of the two of them talking. That was the big leak. And so, yes, he's going on like a, a hoss, a hoss. God damn it. Eric Voss, son of a bitch. <laughs> he got you. He got me. He got you. I looked at the screen. And I hoss came out. A, 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 a Voss heist is a, is a, is a hoss. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. You just got bossed. We got bossed. Um, yeah, Doesn't... I I am excited to see what. Like, I would. I know this doesn't make any sense in context of this movie, but if they could some way pull out a version of, you know, when uh, I'm trying to think what the character's name is when he tells like the story of what happened, and then everyone does the voiceover of the story. That bit, if they could do that with Kang, that would be hilarious. I don't know how. Or why it would fit in. I don't know why his old friends would be. Yeah. Where, where Luis was like. I don't know why they'd be involved. But if it is a heist. I think it'd be funny if he was like. I have some people I need to go get. I think that'd be funny. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he how he shows up in this. Um, I got. And, and chat was saying this too. A couple people in chat were. Big Guardian vibes. Out of that. Guardians. The, like the, the, the colors. And like the sets and and the like the skyscapes <laughs> that they were utilizing and even just the the look of all of the folk down there all the quantum folk felt like a guardians uh situation uh and in a good way like i, I think it all looks fantastic um so you could see that that's where they see what they do with that aspect of it because it, they are trying to do like a a, the out the outer space is is this wacky world, but also like the quantum realm. Like even inside your very atoms, bro, that's cra it's crazy in there too. Like that kind of stuff, I think is is very interesting. We'll see how it plays out because Kang is kind of that dude. You know what I mean? Like Kang is gonna be like, yes, I have a million weirdos working for me, and they're all weird, and there are millions of them. Like yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll it, see. Very impressive. Uh, I, I think that looks awesome. Also, they uh, they captured the comedic side of the whole thing right out of the gate by saying like, "Hey, I love you, Spider Man." Like I thought that was yeah. just if that's a goof that rolls mm -hmm. through the whole movie, great, I'm on board. Uh, I, I've already seen uh, on the on the trailer itself the number one upvoted comment is, "Man, I really can't wait for this next Spider Man film." <laughs> right? Like it's yeah. it's already stuck with the greater uh, MCU. Fan I think base. my only like reservation is that there are a lot of characters yes and the I, whole family being involved. Like, yes and I, i'm not trying to diss it like i do love that they are keeping like the senior aunt couple in the mix because you know there's a lot of ageism in the industry and so sure it's it's kind of dope um to you know to, to see like them still have I don't also, know. If I mean, them still be in the in the mix. Two incredible actors right. as well. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer is incredible. Yes, yes, <laughs> like, and it's great to see her like now. You know, because her Catwoman was absolutely amazing. What do you? What, I'm, uh, what do you mean by right? like now? What do you? What like? Are you saying like she's older? Because I don't see it. I see a woman who can get it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Bronze. 
Get you were about to be so woke for a second. Like, <laughs> you were about to like, yeah, I know. I, I saw oh, that no. line. It was you like, were like mm, that's what are you me. saying? I thought I thought, I thought Jesse was gonna that Michelle Pfeiffer wasn't Catwoman. So you had me seeing the ring like, <laughs> like I, thought, I, was, I didn't want I didn't want math to scroll across your, your eyes for a minute, but no, I, I was it was, I was, it was a strictly like, sexual joke about how I would bang Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, I thought Jesse was going to hit us with age is just a number, you know, and he doesn't see it. I mean, uh, okay, no, that, that can get very creepy very quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I, I guess if you, I go, number. if you go the inverse on that, yeah, that's I had a number I was going to say. Very nasty. Jesus. Chat, what was the number I was going to say? Age is, is just a number. What was that number, chat? You got it. You know what it is. All right. Um, What's the number? Like, just put yourself in my... <laughs> hey, hey! Are you talking about the sex Chat number? <laughs> yeah. Um, call me Michelle Pfeiffer. Never change. Never change. <laughs> I won't. Yeah, as cool as it is to see, um, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer have, like, a bigger role and stuff. Because she is, like, the, she's been in the quantum realm, so, like, she would know it the best. Like, I love her reasoning for being there. Yeah, I also feel like that, like having that many characters, tends to sometimes. I don't know. You sometimes struggle. Like it's a it's a hard uh, walk. Like you gotta you gotta be very careful with it because it could just lose focus on the film if there's like so many people sharing the screen for sure. Um, I, I wonder mm -hmm. about like screen time though. I know two things. I know that they made a lot of. Um, Hey, a lot of internet drama about recasting Cassie. Uh, was there though? I, I like I. People were like, "How's this she's blonde older. girl gonna be?" Yeah, yeah. Like, well, she's a different off, person. You can dye hair. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but but I think at the end of the day, what I'm getting at is her character is probably gonna be big in the first like 25 minutes, and then a captive the rest of the movie. Probably. Yeah. I feel like they're gonna like you know you saw well, that yeah, uh, they they have to do that they have to get some of these characters out of here a little bit because in order to like, like, and there's something Kang says where he says, I can give you more time. So that I think they're basically right. going to try to put something in there that like, oh, being in the quantum realm did something to their genetics and they're going to not going to have that much time together as much as they thought they did. Or maybe they'll put in this story of like, oh, maybe I can undo that timeline where... <clears throat> you were separated and maybe well, you I always think, have been uh, together. Isn't, isn't uh, Cassie Lang like able to change size without the suit because of her exposure to like pin particles or is, does she require the suit? I'm back. Hello. Hi. How do you yeah. do? We're back. Uh, <laughs> My like PC completely froze and it killed the network. That was very strange. Never had that happen before. Anyways, you guys good? Hell yes. Okay. People will get bigger and fill out cameras as soon as the call quality uh, increased. I blame uh, Mr. Eric Haas. We got, we got Voss Haas again. God damn it. He took us out. It's rude. What were you guys saying? Do you remember? Uh, we were talking about the movie. <laughs> and we were talking about uh, what was going on with different characters. Oh, wasn't I was I was about to say like doesn't Cassie? I I don't think we finished this. Doesn't Cassie Lang uh, just have inherent par, uh, like Pym particle powers without the suit? Isn't that her uh, like power? I don't. You know, the, we have no knowledge of that in the MCU. Well, not so yeah, not in the MCU like, greater, but she she's a character in the comics. Uh, starts with sure, an sure, S, sure, sure. But I'm saying like this could lead to something like that or be. You know, this could, but right now she's just a kid. Yeah. Um, like yeah. I, I think stature. If I had to put on my writer's cap for this, the way I see a movie like this playing out, because they're bronze is right. There are too many characters. There's just too many characters. Based on the previous two movies, we've seen plenty of um, Hope and Hank hanging out. Right. Like that's been a thing we've seen. We don't need to see that anymore. We've seen Hank and Scott hang out. We don't need to see that anymore. I feel like this is going to be one of those movies where Hank is like, I'm going to stay behind and work to try and fix and like solve a way to get back. Yeah. And then Hope and her mom are going to have like Hope Mom bonding adventure time and they're going to do their own thing and they're going to get caught up with aliens and shit. That's probably and right. Then, and then Hank 
uh, uh, Scott and his daughter are going to have their whole, whole thing. And I think what's going to end up happening is the daughter's going to get kidnapped and he's going to play like the whole, like, I'll do whatever you need to get Cassie back. Meanwhile, the sub, the B plot is going to be Hope and her mom attempting to like, they're going to do their own. In the end, they're going to be ones like save the day, save the day. Yeah. Like they're going to be the ones in the do background think, who are like uh, <clears throat> working with these weird alien people. You think they kill Hank? Does Hank die in this film? The the Pim? No way. No way. You don't think so? Nope. I mean, I guess if he dies, right, then because <clears throat> Scott's not a scientist. So no. they don't really have like the the quote unquote man in the chair at that point. Yeah. Because that's been Hank Pym's role so far. So I guess they couldn't yeah, really there's, they, they have to have a man in the chair. Pym is the man in the chair. <clears throat> That's the way it is. Like he's gonna be there as long as they can use him. They're not stupid. Yeah, I mean the the wasp is like smart, but I don't think she's on the level of Hank Pym in that regard. <clears throat> like she can't fill that that role. She's also you know in the field yeah. as it were. So it I don't know. They they could uh, we we could lose the mom. We could lose uh, Miss Pfeiffer. She could go. Might be a one film thing. I don't I think ever I think these all these main characters make it out. <clears throat> it also could just be a the bad guy wins. It's fucking chaos. Yeah, this is gonna be yeah, if I had to guess, it's gonna be one of those things where all the heroes live, but the end result of their adventure is like, oh no, we made it worse. That's what's yes, gonna happen. Yes. I think like and then it's gonna be him trying to make up for the fact that he unleashed Kang on the world. I think it's gonna be a yeah. Tony Stark style story like an Ultron kind of story where it's like, oh, he saved his family, but at what cost? And then he's going to have to kind of like come to terms with that. Yeah. I also don't think it's necessarily going to be Scott Lang making those bad choices. I think it's going to be Hank Pym because that's like a Hank Pym moment to like accidentally unleash Hank on the world to save his wife. Like, yes, I 100% think Hank Pym would do that. Yeah. Um. And because, like, even in the comics, he's kind of an anti-hero. And so, like, I he like he makes questionable choices. And depending on the comic run you're looking at, he's also abusive to his wife in some of those. So I wonder if they're going to bring that over into the MCU in the sense, like, not obviously having him be a wife beater, but instead having it be like, oh, yeah, he's so full of himself. He's like, yeah, no, I we can deal with Kang. Let's get what we want from him and fuck him over. And then be outsmarted on that level. Like it would be like a sort of Tony Stark style story, but with Hank Pym at the center, who's the only other actor and character that could pull that off. Because yeah. like Michael Douglas has the chops to pull it off. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I the thing I'm interested in. He's an in ass is... in the first Ant Man movie. He's so mean. Oh, he's a giant yeah. prick. Yeah, but but then he becomes a lovable <laughs> asshole towards the end of it, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, even no, in, no, in sure. the what if verse, he literally causes like <laughs> the end of the world. So yeah, you know, true. It's it. I, I'm I'm very curious how they're going to restate or reshow the things we learned in Loki. They have to. They have to do that, right? They have to come in and be like, "Oh, hey, if we, you didn't watch yeah. the TV show, we have to re-explain to you the quantum well, realm universe and beyond." What? Well, I think that film because starts you, off and it's. We've seen Kang. Well, I think that film starts off and it's it's Kang in his present time in the in our future, and it shows him like somehow inventing time travel jumping through some portal ending up in the quantum realm and then like boom quantum mania and it goes back to scott and them i do you think i would assume that that bit like i don't know how they're gonna do it clearly it would make sense to explain kang but also it might be fun to leave it as a mystery the idea that they discover kang and kang's like oh hey you know i run this place don't even stress it like i've got plans and whatever and we don't discover the shit like from the comics until Kang Dynasty, which would be like if they're gonna do the same thing they did. That is with, true. Oh, yeah, they're gonna no. do the same thing they did with Thanos. The idea of oh, the big movie is gonna be all the heroes coming together, but the majority of it is the story of the villain, so you can understand the villain's motives. 
Yeah. So, and I think we just connected. Oh, are we good? No, we're good. We have uh, we have I audio. Have audio, but my... no video. Hello. I think my I video card is at... crashing. Is what's happening here? I think Barry I'm, cursed looks me. Looks confused. Yeah, we don't. Maybe the video is dead. But we have on my audio. end, I look fucking pissed because I was like looking up. <laughs> yeah. 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 You you look yeah you look kind of pissed off. I look like I'm about to do air quotes. See, like, here's you do, you do. Yeah. I'm pretty convinced that uh, today is absolutely cursed. Uh, Barry woke up and said, "Man, I'm just crashing so much on these new video drivers." And I said, "Oh, that's really weird. I haven't had any crashes." Cut to an hour oh, and a half you did later, that to yourself. and everything yeah, is crashing. Just a knock on wood after that. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, so my computer is. I have no video signal whatsoever. So that's really cool. But we have audio, so I guess just keep talking and I'll fiddle. This is now a podcast. It is. It is now a podcast. That's correct. Yeah. Um, you know, JP, uh -huh. today, is, you heard this, but Probably as not. it dropped, uh -huh. as we concluded, I said, JP, you know, I heard today is Diwali, and whatever happens to you today happens uh -huh. to the rest of the year. Really? So, you spent... Yeah, what you spend today doing is going to set the path. I just learned that about here. you, so you're screwed, bro. Have fun. No, but we have the... <laughs> Sorry. We have today to turn it around, though. Oh, I have okay. the rest of the today? To yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's like, not Like, your January and February are going to be a, a shit show, people, but, like, like, the rest of the year... Like, I, I, was, I was telling Jesse, like, Oh, a lot of people spend Diwali like cleaning their houses like this this time of the year. So then like on Diwali, they have like a clean home and a clear mind and like they're happy and they spend it celebrating instead of doing chores. And then that's supposed to like set the path for the rest of the year. Mm. I'm not even joking. I'm going home and I'm going to clean my <laughs> whole apartment. I'm not even like <laughs> playing. I could use all the good luck. <laughs> you send me all the good vibes. I'll take it all. I don't even care. Yeah. I'm going to light a Dia just for you, just for you, Jesse. I'm going to send you a picture of it. I'm going to pick an orange thank one. Thank you. I'm going to pick a, a oh, nice ginger one. Oh, that's very cute. That's very cute. I'll um, take it. I'll take, look, I'll take any and all good vibes. I'm <laughs> running on empty. I'm like, God help me. Well, let's, <laughs> let's do this because Bron's got a cat appointment to get to. Let's just, I let's, do. let's discuss Legion next week. I know, I know you guys are, are hot on it, but I don't want this to crash again because yeah. I'll actually lose my shit. <laughs> three okay. crashes in a show. Lose, okay. you want, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh I'll just say this. This is my 10 second Legion review. Yeah, let's do a 10, 10 second Legion review. Oh, number one. This is so good and it makes me so upset that like a lot of MCU stuff is so formulaic. And when that message came up in the beginning of in a partnership with Marvel like television, I was like so mad. Yeah. Because it has such a different vibe and flavor. And number two. The actor they cast for Amal Farouk is. He's incredible. Him he's in so good. It's so upsetting here's, to me. Here's the he's thing. So good. He's actually kind of typecast as that type of actor. And he's been in a massive amount of films. If you go and like look him really? up, he's been in an insane amount of films. And I didn't know that because the first time I saw him was Legion. But he's been in so much stuff. And he gets kind of typecast, unfortunately. It's like the the you know middle eastern type bad guy and a lot of stuff and it kind of sucks in that regard in this, but he fucking me, he destroys and like as a bad guy yeah like i felt like aubrey plaza is, is was the bad guy and now we're getting more depth to that but like amal farouk just to me like he he's he's very charismatic he almost has like i don't know how to describe it he has like a certain vibe that especially when he starts talking about the race dynamic yeah. Uh, between him and Professor X, or what is heavily implied to be Professor X, I yep. was like, and then he's just so charming, and like, he's a great actor uh, I like for that role. Him a lot. <clears throat> I have. Yeah, I, like I knew this was going to be uh, the craziest. Sh like, season one did not prepare. Like you told us, it was going to get wacky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The minute it was like. Okay, here's how we open our show. Uh, I think it's all this in the first episode, I think. Where it's like the minute we open the first episode is the characters we saw drive off into the sunset in like evil, maniacal way are now like cackling like crazy people in a pool 
in a person's eye and you're like wait wh what then by the end of the episode it's like dance off the dance off really the sets the tone and you're like mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. this mm -hmm. show is so crazy every like we went from like and now a mystery to no you're not gonna learn anything by the end of the first episode it's gonna be just as weird as it always is bye and you're like what <laughs> Also, uh, you know, you know a, what, what a I'll crazy say looking like minotaur a... dude that scared the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah. 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 I, I feel like the, the most clever part of the direction and sort of the creative of Legion is that they make a lot of really strong uh, art choices. And so they actually hide what's important and what's not important, like in plain sight. Because they'll have things like, okay, here's a really small thing that you know has no plot significance but like that's what i mean by like they bombard you with weirdness so you don't know you can't discern what's important the way you can in mcu stuff the way they serve food it's like boats on a river with like food going by that's not normal it's like a conveyor belt uh, it's like one of those like sushi who, conveyor belts but it's a boat yes yeah, yeah, on a, yeah but it's a crazy. boat with pancakes on it and waffles that's not normal so like they accost you with like these really strong lighting choices really strong art choices really strange choices of how they make technology and things like that look and so then you're like when you do get random flashes you're like is this just them fucking around or is this important yeah. and it's the same is... thing like even with the sex scene between um sydney and uh the main character david yeah. the way they yeah the way they represent stuff is so weird that then when there's something off about it you're like is this so significant? <laughs> there's like a moment where she's like a kitty cat <laughs> like there's so on the roof. Shit. Like, yeah, I, I will say but that was like Bronson foreshadowing, you... too, because they show yeah, her like because like, it's so random. They show her like licking her hand and you're like, yes. what the fuck? And then you're like, oh, she's learning to swap with animals like this is actually important. This is actually going to come up. It's foreshadowing. Yeah. What is the um? did you did you finish episode three bronze? Yes. The end of episode three is exactly what, when you talk about artistic choices, it literally mm. is like 10 minutes of what is a modern art exhibit. It's like yep. a pitch black room with like text on the ground and shit. I was like, this is brilliant cinematography. Like, mm. this is cool as shit. It's upsetting that this is a show that like yeah. didn't watch, didn't care this about. This show wasn't got my radar. slept on. Yeah, There's parts 100%. of it. Like, I, I hate watching this after watching Loki. <laughs> because now I understand what the TVA could have been. Like, I was sure. impressed with it until watching season two of Legion. And I know that's a controversial thing to say. Yeah. But this, to me, is like what a TVA headquarters should look like. <clears throat> the end scene where it's like almost horror-like, where um, uh, Carrie's walking through the halls and you have the lights like reverberating and it's like going over their faces. Such a cool lighting choice. Yeah. Like, such a fucking cool lighting choice. Um, when he sees Sid from the future and the lighting on her face is like rotating. So it almost looks like she's getting older and younger at the same time. Such a yep. cool lighting choice. Like they make, they take such big swings and they pay off. And it's so clearly a labor of love. Like whoever yes. is behind the camera is like thinking really hard about how to like make this stuff that it's like, oh, these are, it, it, it evokes a feeling. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And there's times like all the Amal Farouk sequences remind me of Sam Singh's The Fall, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely see it. But it, it has like that hyper, like realistic to where it's almost fantasy type of color grading. So the pool sequences and his sequence in the desert, it's, it's like very much when he's at the fortune teller booth, it doesn't even look like it's from the same show. Right. Like, it's just, it's, I don't know how to describe it. They're like the way they, they're so brightly lit for somebody whose name is the Shadow King. It's almost like kind of nefarious and how it's like almost oppressive sunlight in every single one of his scenes. But then he's like in an idyllic place, like, like by the pool. Yeah. And you see Aubrey Plaza in the background <clears throat> killing herself, Lenny killing themselves That's repeatedly. Incredibly depressing, too. Uh, <clears throat> her situation, yeah. just like being stuck within his brain, like she doesn't have a body. She's just stuck, like in a physical body. She's just stuck in the Shadow King's mind, and he can utilize her sometimes. <laughs> it's cool as shit. It's the things they're doing with the show. 
the visuals, the way that they kind of like show all the different side characters as well is is like their struggles. Yeah. It like yeah, you're right, Bronze. This was 100 percent slept on. This show is fantastic. I and watched it when it was live. You guys slept. I wasn't sleeping on it. No, <laughs> I slept. Yeah, I slept on him. Admittedly, I think based having watched the first season, it is straight up just like a very slow. It, it, it is an a show insanely released on Netflix where film, every episode came show. out at the same time. Yes, it would have been a hit. But because it was on, it's the same problem with a lot of TV shows that are mystery based. Uh, I know in the like mm. the early mid two thousands, yeah, they did that all the time. After Lost was a hit, a bunch of shows like that came out, and they all flopped because the idea of keeping people invested in a mystery week to week to week to is tough, and especially like a show like like the first season of Legion, where not there isn't a lot of forward momentum in the plot. A lot of the time, stuff just stops, and they it's have like an episode incredibly where they're like, We're slow. deal with your mind palace now. It's like what the hell, but. If it was all released at once, I can see people being like obsessed with this show. Yeah. Because once you watch, like we did, we saw all mm. of it in like a really condensed amount of time. I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. But I very much understand because episode to episode, I was like, we really didn't do much there. Yeah. Like we, no. I mean, I was kind of talk. I will agree that the pacing is slow, but I will also, I, I will press on this point that. I think they can get away with it because it's a feast for the eyes. Where, yes. Like if it was Marvel and we were watching characters in front of a green screen and the pacing was this slow, it would absolutely not fucking work. Yeah. Like, but these are like practical sets with amazing lighting, amazing cinematography, really like strong actors like that they really give space to like stretch in that role. And mm -hmm. I think that because of that, the, the overarching plot you know even if it is slow i feel like they can get away with it because when i'm watching it i never think it's slow it's after right. i'm done that i'm like oh wow in an hour we haven't progressed this very much you know but when i'm watching it i'm never like this is dragging i, n I never feel that way i'm yeah. like oh this is what the i'm like what does this mean <laughs> yeah it's it's hard to it is the, the best way i can describe it if people haven't seen legion yet the best if you've seen the new dune movie it is on that level of a feast for the eyes where it's just like every scene is a new thing that you're like, what the hell am I like the minute you're just like, okay, so that is who is this guy with like the mask on? And then is like three servant people. Like <laughs> there's so much going yeah. on. You're just like, it's all yeah, that guy's bananas. That, he's, he's an it's, AI. Right. But yeah. Yeah. But it's like all, yeah. it's all bizarre looking and weird. And the lighting is strange. And it is like, Mm -hmm. uh, it is all different from what you're used to and it's it's fascinating it's fascinating to watch yeah it's it... just really strong transitions to like like oh, when yeah. the camera slides in from the side and you see this like elephant and at first you think it's a kettle and then there's like all the steam coming out of it and then you see her like inhaling it and you realize that she's doing that same drug that david used to do in season one and like they just they make really strong choices and I think it's a masterclass in like investment because so many shows fail at this, but like you don't see the side characters that much, but somehow you care about all of them. Oh, and yeah, I don't know right. how they've managed to do that, but like, do you don't, you don't see them that much. Like, um, I always forgot to pronounce his name. Is it told me? Tony me. Oh, uh, it's the one that starts with a P, at least in the subtitle. So you want to say Potatomy, but that's not his name. <laughs> yeah, Tommy? yeah, it's yeah, it does. Start, I always I watch everything with subtitles on because I have like hearing yeah. issues in one ear. Pot I think I his think name's name's like Tononomy or Tononomy. Tononomy, right? Because the P is silent. Tononomy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably Tononomy. I don't know. I thought it was Tolmy. That's a different character. Tononomy Wallace. But yeah. I feel like we don't see him that often, but they've done such a good job with his casting and his scenes that when we do see him, we care. Yeah. Right. And like that seeing what his mind palace was like, like what a bliss it would be to forget stuff. I was like, oh my God, like this is actually really fucking sad. Like I, I never thought about that, but like remembering everything, every moment of your life forever would actually really fucking and like suck perfect detail think about it it would suck yeah. yeah right 
like if you have a bad memory and you have a hard time living it down imagine being able to recall it perfectly yeah like like heartbreak embarrassing moments cringe shit you said like sometimes like forgetting things is is bliss you know people that have died friendships that fell apart like i never really thought about it but it was so perfectly done in the show Mm-hmm. And even like him wearing a dapper floral suit, I was like, oh, he is always dressed incredibly like well in the show. Yes. And so they just take really, they make really strong choices with like, you're not always going to see these characters on screen, but when you do, it's going to be in a scene that like very quietly, but very effectively furthers their character and plot development to where there is like a strong sense of investment. Like, cause if anything happened to them, I would be devastated. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you two were aware of this, but the writer of this, Noah Hawley, is also the person that wrote uh, the Fargo TV series for FX. I literally that makes just so went much to IMDb. sense. Yeah. I just I'm, he's, I'm he's, on IMDb right now looking at Noah Hawley literally because I want to be like, what else has dude done? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and like he's have have very both of well you known. seen Fargo? Uh, I've watched yeah. first first ish season i know it's like a beloved so critically good. acclaimed show yeah it's very it's very good it's so um, also, good i fucking love fargo Same also guy. i guess he worked on bones which i think is super interesting. i think initially yeah he's also working on the alien prequel tv series right now yeah yeah, yeah. oh my god alien. i'm so excited right now. now that's gonna be so good <laughs> yeah so he he definitely like, like people saw how well he did uh with this show and and even though it wasn't like a big commercial success it was a like critic darling for sure the show makes me mad with how like good it is in places where I'm just like, cause like yeah. they get the sci-fi lighting down. So like, like just, just so good. Like they, they have it dialed in like where it's, it's dark where it's supposed to be without obscuring detail, which right. is something that is completely missed in a lot of, in a lot of stuff where it's like, they make it so dark. You can't see what's happening. But somehow they make it dark and still light their dark skinned characters perfectly. Yeah. Which I'm like, I don't I don't know who their <laughs> lighting guy is. That guy probably deserves 18 awards. Sure. They should have hired him to do Game of Thrones because that shit was a hot <laughs> fucking mess. Yeah. But they they somehow do it where things are like like dark to insinuate the lights are off or to give you a sense of dread, or they have emergency lighting going, but you can still see what's happening in the scene which is really refreshing instead of being like squinting. Yeah. Or having to get real close to the TV. <laughs> oh, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. 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 It's, it's great. I'm glad you guys are loving it. Um, yeah. Season two only gets stranger. To be honest, I don't remember very much of season three. Cause I think it, the quality, unfortunately, I want to say dips a little bit. Um, and mm. I don't, I don't remember the exact reasons, but I don't recall too much about it. I just remember people being a little bit negative on it. So if we ever get to season three, um, I'm excited to see what that looks like because the other tag that was kind of pinned to it was that it's actually weirder. <laughs> so I bet it's one of those cases where it's like, oh, we'll give you X amount of budget to finish out your story Maybe, versus, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, because sometimes that's where you have to cut corners. It's like, oh, we would like to have this much. Well, your show isn't as successful as we wanted it to be. So we'll give you X amount, use that to tell the rest of the story. And then, you know, you have to start trimming back. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think that there was a ton of time between season one and season two. Um, and so people just kind of lost interest in the show. And so for season two to season three, I think it was a much lower budget, uh, unfortunately. So what was the, uh, do you know why there was such a time? Was it, I don't recall. No, I, I think it might have been because when when Legion came out, Marvel hadn't really done anything in like the TV space. Right. I think like Agents mm-hmm. of S.H.I.E.L.D. was right around that same time. And so they looked at their like TV properties and were just like, man, this kind of sucks. Like we should do something else. And I think maybe Netflix was just now just getting started with like Daredevil right around that time. Um And so when season three came out, it was at the like pre Disney plus era and like right when all that stuff was on the downfall before the upswing of Disney plus. Um, And so they just didn't have the budget for it. And yeah, chat's also saying there was a writer strike that could have been a big writer strike. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
because there was there was multiple episodes of that uh, in the sense of a writer strike not of legion but there's been a lot of writer strikes over the past couple of years specifically during this time period for sure and it was also like peak marvel fatigue i think that was uh yeah that was probably like i'd have to look at the years uh for for legion but it it might have been right before the like uh infinity war era when it got like big again like super super big uh legions i just let's see i i feel because i definitely suffered from marvel fatigue for a while but for me this show doesn't trigger it but i think some of it is they never reuse the same tricks twice yeah. and i was like actually thinking about it in this show where in season one they show psychic battles as almost like those cute animated cartoon fight between Professor X and uh, the Shadow King. Yeah. And in this one, they reuse it at one point where it's reflected in his glasses and then he slumps over dead, which I thought was so fucking brilliant because they're letting you know, oh, he's fighting a mental battle while he has these hot bitches all over him and he's like living this life and then he's like, douche. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah. But then they also show them wrestling. So it's like yes, they, they do a literal and, wrestling and scene, yeah, battle, and they do a dance battle, and I think that was also a psychic fight. To be pro to be honest, <clears> I think like they they d never use like okay, well we did the animated thing, let's do the animated thing again, yeah, or oh we did this thing, let's do this thing again. Like every single time they show like a psychic fight, it's different. Mm -hmm. Which they is use, a, like a different. Trick. I think that's a great way to show like because in a lot of media you just see two people going like this at each other and like making yeah. right like weird facial gestures uh but this but is the like, fact that they don't explain it right like yeah and it just happens is kind of cool too there's i will i will say that if you so um holly is brilliant but i will say that if you want an example of um a movie of his that is like the exact same way but you're just like well that wasn't executed well uh, there's a Natalie Portman movie. I don't know what it's called, but it's like Natalie. Po it's and it's by him. Natalie Portman is in space. She's an astronaut, and she like has something happen to her in space that when she returns to Earth, she just like doesn't like something about it is just not. It doesn't like sit well with her, huh. and she has like weird flashes of her grandmother. Oh, oh and, yeah, like, crazy shit. And John Hamm is in the movie. Are you talking about yeah, Annihilation? She, no, no. Um. I thought that was Annihilation. No, this is Lucy in the Sky. That's what it is. Thanks, Chad. Oh, I've never Lucy seen Lucy in the Lucy Sky. Is the name of it? Huh? It is. Um, it's not. It's like not that great, to be honest. It Just is a little weird. It, and the reason why it's not great is because it uses the exact same kind of stuff that Legion uses, but it's hard to put that in a two-hour movie and make it make sense. Like she goes through some. Like, she starts seeing things. There's weird flashes. Like. There's moments like even the ending. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like it's that kind of thing where instead of it being like, "Oh, next week we'll find out the answer," it's like, and then it's over. And and then oh. it it got it didn't get a lot of good reviews because people were like, "What the hell did we just watch?" Yeah, and I think so. It's interesting to see how this works and where it works because sometimes, like with this, when you're talking about the psychic fighting, <clears throat> it comes out of nowhere. And you're like, "What the hell?" But then. It's reinforced later, like, oh, that must be what that was. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's that, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm excited well, for... This guy's supposed to be kind of trippy. Well, yeah, I get it. I understand. I'm excited but... for, for season two to go on, because uh, it... If y'all think this is weird, <laughs> like, it gets... It goes... And, and then it's... I don't remember season three, but if that's, like, create even and more insane than what I remember season two is, then, okay. Yeah. I think it's okay for things to be trippy and confusing, like the yeah. way, but I think like with what Jesse's describing, it's still, you still need to be able to give the audience, the audience should still be able to interpret something from it. And yeah. maybe they don't have, all have the same interpretation, but I think that's where movies like um, Green Knight excel. Um, I never watched I, that, I think that but film I've, is I've heard great things, yeah. Um, an Annihilation is one of those. I loved Annihilation. That that um, movie fucked me up, man. <laughs> it did. It did. It's it's kind of insane. But I think like different people have different interpretations of like what's happening and what the ending is. You know. Yeah. Um. I just didn't like the I ending think, like, scene being so loud 
and like having that oh, weird yeah. fucking it's like thing a like sensory trip overload. out. Like yeah, yeah I was. Yeah. It was a complete it's, it's sensory overload. Yeah, it's uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing that in theaters and, and looking around like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, like, even, even watching people? like reality fold back on itself and like all the reflections, I was like, oh, they're trying to like, this is like eldritch horror. It's supposed to be yes. like, oh, you're bombarded. This You you can't comprehend what's happening. Yeah, um, right. And that bear. Yeah, I, I, that like, I like bear. movies Holy like shit. that. That, that bear was horrifying. That bear was crazy. I, I when it screamed, it screamed like a per like, oh my God. That yeah. was crazy. I'm an Alex Garland like super fan though, because I also love the ex machina. Um oh, that movie that film was great. Alex yeah. Garland also did 28 Days Later. Did he write it? I think he wrote it. Sure. I'll, I'll agree if one, you say that. But <laughs> we'll have to look it up. But like um I think it, I think being weird is okay as long as you have interpretations of it and i think that is where this show succeeds like sometimes you look at something and you're like i think this is this and maybe it's not that but that's how it keeps you going along with the weirdness is like you need to be able to interpret something yeah. from like the pool scene in my mind that is based off of what amal farouk said about i'm gonna go to italy and have power and money i was like okay so we are in his mind maze right now that was my interpretation. And he has created the heaven for himself that he wants to recreate in real life because it's not fucking real. It's yeah, fake. Right. And the monk is kind of doing the same thing to other people. He's trapping them in their own like sort of mind mazes, mind palaces that are their version of like heaven or their power fantasy in some ways. Right. So like I I figured that out, but like it could be something else because they also show it reflected in David's eye. But I think as long as you can have an interpretation, that's what's important. It also yeah. raises the question of like if you possess if he possesses Lenny and Lenny is still there, like what does that mean? Well, it start you start to they're they're like giving a little side commentary on like what is what is a soul of a person, right? Yes, <laughs> like what is yes. what is the mind like, of so a person he, separated from the physical he body? He hijacked the soul. Yeah. Does that yeah. mean he's hijacked Oliver's soul? Yeah. I don't know. You got to keep watching season two. Because why is Oliver's soul not in the maze? We haven't seen Oliver's soul in a fucking minute. Well, we, we've only seen his his body because that's what Farouk is in. But did he eat the soul? Is the soul gone? Yeah, I don't know. Why don't isn't know. he there? Like, think think about it. Like, like he's not there. Like Lenny's there in several scenes, walking yeah. around, talking freely with them all. Oliver is not. And then in other I assume places, this is something that we present. would learn later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? I ha I I agree I like have to believe. I have to believe all the moments where I was like, what the shit? Because last season they did a, the chalkboard moment where they were like, all right, we're going to literally take a moment to explain everything to you on a chalkboard. I was like, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. And I'm hoping we have something that by the end of this season that's like all that shit you saw, this is what that was. Yeah. Or someone to be like, what? My my, yeah. I just my favorite part, and I remember watching this uh, when it was like week to week, is having John Hamm do these like detailed explanations oh. about different mental oh, good. things, and like oh good, it, it it the episode like it would happen in the episode, and I would go and read like the Reddit there, where everyone was like, so uh, anyone want to talk about John Hamm talking about how these ticks just pop up in society? <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's so good because it gives me aperture science vibes in the best way where like the experiments they did in the last one where it's like, this will make you throw up. And then they're like, this is red. This is green. Red means <laughs> red means stop. Green means go. And that kid walks into traffic and they're like, mm. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, this yeah. Is like They have Jerm Jermaine just kind of like smile and it's like, oh, yeah. shit, that kid died. <laughs> it's like peak aperture science vibes of like, yeah. Poor science. We must keep testing. That it's stuff, like, oh, that this stuff is continues. So it, you're not done with with old ham yet. But yeah, he. I love it. I great. love that seed that it's planting of like, what is it like? Because it's obviously a hint to like what this plague is that's spreading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Well, I'm glad it's you good. guys are enjoying it. Uh, the the weirdness is yeah. is uh, is welcomed on uh, on the show. And uh, luckily, I will knock on wood. We haven't had a crash, so we can wrap it up. And uh, good luck with editing this, Reggie. That'll be fun. Um, 
Oh, wait, but one last thing. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Let me know if you agree. I don't know if you remember the plot, JP, but when they did the dance battle in episode, in, I think two? episode one. Oh, yeah, yeah. At the end of two? one. No, I think it was yeah, the end one. of one. You've got, you've got David. You've got Lenny. Yeah. Who I think represents Farouk in that scene. Still wearing Lenny's face. Yeah. And you have Oliver. And then after that, you don't have Oliver anymore. Yeah. And we haven't seen Oliver subconscious since then. Does that mean Oliver lost? I th- I think so cuz don't uh, aren't Lenny and Oliver like one number at the end of that? Like are Yeah, they, they have... get merged. Yeah, so I think that's like them becoming like an a single entity essentially. Is is what that's trying like, to represent? They also show Lenny dri- or not Lenny Oliver driving a lot, and now we haven't had a scene where he's driving. And I'm like, is the car a metaphor for like, oh, he still has his hands on the wheel, and Lenny is in the passenger seat? Yeah. And now is it like, no, Lenny's not in the passenger seat anymore because Oliver's not driving the car anymore? Right, right, right. And, but but Farouk also didn't exist at least. Uh, is like the physical representation or the on-screen representation until the end of episode one, right? Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. He's still he's like wearing Lenny's face, and then he says that because he's like trying to fuck with David. Yeah, yeah, trying to because sh- because David knows who Lenny is from his past, right? Yeah, because because he mm-hmm. was feeding on David, and so that's where that came from. That that's who that's where Lenny came from uh, is a representation of. Of David's past, essentially, but also a person. In his I'm past. not gonna lie; I wasn't even sure Lenny was real at the end of season one, and finding out Lenny is real in season two has been a little bit of like a. I just thought that was all a made up reality. Yeah, just, Len, Lenny's just a druggie from David's past. I'm not that he used to get high with. But wasn't Lenny Benny? Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> the, I one I get confused with it, and two I don't want to say something that is a spoiler for that happened okay. in season yeah, two. Yeah, like I feel like in season one we learned we learned that like none of that was real. I don't, honest to God, I there was every, a person that David did like faces. Yeah. David did do drugs with someone named Lenny or Benny in season in his past, and I think that is the rep that is who is in Farouk's mind and that he's taken as like their quote unquote soul or their their mind i thought that benny was real lenny was the mind person that was created to disrupt the memories by the shadow king by by for i guess well, David I guess. actually references this in this season because he says wait what no you didn't know me back then i didn't meet you until the hospital and then he's like right did i so he even references it too, where he's like, "No, you didn't show up until the hospital," and Benny is from before that. Yeah, Benny's from the scene where they were like on the floor, drugged out, and yeah. Lenny is the hot like his hospital friend, his hospital mind friend, who's like, "Let's get into trouble, what crazy," and he was made up based off of Benny. I think is what Aubrey Plaza's character is. Oh. I. So chat's saying Benny was his friend before Clockworks. Clockworks was yes. the facility. Lenny yes. was in Clockworks, and he thought they were the same person. Is that? I thought that Lenny was always a mind person, but okay. If Lenny was a real person in the asylum, fine. Like, whatever. I just did not. That's not what I clocked on. I was like, Benny was the real person. Lenny was like. Yeah, Lenny. And then someone else says worm. Lenny was used to confuse David by replacing Benny in his memories. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was like it was basically like the face that Farouk wore, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We should probably wrap up though. Yeah, I know you gotta go. Uh, we we can definitely wrap up. Uh, next week we'll do the next three right, episodes of Legion. Me. Also, my costume showed up. I hope you guys are mm-hmm. good to go for next week. My costume showed up too. Oh, Jesse, is your costume showed up? No comment. No comment. <laughs> Cat's gonna lose their mind. Okay, not uh, gonna expect what I'm gonna be. No one will expect. Yeah, no, everyone's gonna be surprised with me as well. Uh, when you join the call next week, I'll preface this in Twitter. Turn your camera off. No cameras. We'll reveal on screen together. Okay. So okay. when you okay. when you tune in next week, chat. Everyone's cameras will be black, and we'll do live reveals uh, in real time <gasps> for everyone. 
And then we'll discuss uh, the next three episodes of Legion. And if they drop another trailer of something, then we'll watch that as well. Uh, let's do some shout outs. Call it a, sh a fucking weird show type. I don't know. This is a weird, weird day. Bronze, start us off. What's going on? Um, hi, hello, I'm that bronze girl. You can catch me doing D and D stuff and Warhammer stuff and other stuff on my channel. I also have a bi-weekly comic book show uh called Bagged and Boarded. Um, and that airs on Saturdays and I, I edit it and put it on YouTube. So um I work really hard on it. Feel free to check it out. This week we did a tier list of the sexy man spreading comic book uh poses and um you can see my rankings. And uh, uh, we talked about my favorite comic, this book, which is um, The Arrival. Is that what it's called? The Approach. The Approach. Really good book. So if you want some cool, spooky Halloween recommendations, come through. That's me. That bronze girl everywhere. Bye. Jessica. Happy Diwali. <laughs> Thank you. You as well. Jess Cox. Dance it up. Hey. Hi, everyone. Boy, I could use some coffee. Anyway, uh, hey. Uh, what's going on with me is right now you should go check out monster prom three monster road trip available right now it's doing great shout out to everyone for leaving amazing reviews on steam and getting us to the number one and new and trending on the on the steam page so thank you Woo! um and then uh yeah tomorrow if you're in la doing a live show uh cannot wait to see everyone there for chaluminati it is another stupid thing that i do and it's great and super fun so that's a thing and then the rest of the week i imagine i will be potentially dead i don't know i don't know it's been a hell of a last seven days so <laughs> help help me help all right me. we're gonna get out of here jesse i hope you get the help, help you need please help me i hope you get the help you need okay <laughs> The help I need is call is Colombian. Wait, no, that sounds like drugs. Is it's is just cough. It's a cough. I was talking about coffee, but uh -huh. whatever. Okay, all right. Good luck, Jesse. <laughs> Bronze. Good luck at the vet. Hope everything works Thank out. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week. It'll be our spooky Halloween episode of crazy costumes and spooky Halloween. Legion episode four, five, and six, and then whatever. The, we didn't get to any news this week, but the episode is kind of fucked up <laughs> from the get-go. So <laughs> next week, we'll be back on track. Circle around. We'll see you guys then. All right, we're out of here. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.